come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie that comes your way every Saturday. The movie? The, the podcast. It's the a movie radio show. And talk show <laughs> podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. Because we're on this quest, a little tiny quest to conquer the world, one a listener quest. at a time, and you right now are helping us out with this. Thank you very much. A tiny quest for tiny listeners. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Colin. What have we watched tonight? We watched a on movie called... Dark Knight. <laughs> of the Scarecrow. Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. From the year. 1981. <sighs> From the uh, TV station, like, uh, what, what, what station yeah, did yeah. this air on? CBS. Okay, yeah, okay. So, uh, television. Okay, right. Mr. No TV Movies. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 How things have changed yes. know, over yeah. the many years. Well, yeah. I think you blew that door wide open when the you brought Halloween, Halloween 2. Halloween 2. The yeah, TV I'm a trendsetter. I'm a, I'm a yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sharknado I'm, I'm we did way. at one point. Yeah. That was not me. I can't claim that one. I don't know. I've always thought that like 70s and 80s TV movies, like uh, the stuff that came out in the 90s was like defined mm-hmm. by like, to me, horror, at least Stephen King mm-hmm. movies, yeah, right? Yeah, there was a lot of those, right? They or feel... Night of the Twisters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they feel like TV movies. I mean, I guess this yeah. feels like a TV movie, but like it feels like in the 70s they were just lower budget feature films you know yeah. it's like they yeah. still have the same kind of you know i mean i guess right. what it but was... you could probably get someone from like if it was a cbs produced thing you could get somebody who's on a hot tv show at that point right probably to do crossover yeah yeah probably get him in on yeah, a movie but like charles that. durning is in this and he's not a tv uh person i mean is they're like they're feature actors oh charles durning no, no, I mean, TV at the time. I know he's been in tons. I don't think, well, since, you know, I mean, probably, um, actually, what hit was he in? I was confusing him for a minute with Carol O'Connor, right? He was in In the uh-huh. Heat of the Night. That wasn't Charles Durning. No, no, that was, in, that was uh, Carol O'Connor. Charles Durning was in Dog Day Afternoon. Am I right? He was in Dog Day Afternoon. He was in Sharky's Machine, I think. With, with we haven't Hunter. watched Sharky's Machine. We keep bringing it up. We should watch Sharky's Machine. This is all on a meat fucking yeah. Sharky. That, also, previous episode, Strays, that was a TV movie. That's and true. that was one that yeah. felt like a real movie. And Terror Track. Yeah, Terror? that. Yeah. You know, so we've I, done a couple. Of them. I feel we've like we've done TV. I feel like a lot of times the only way you can really tell it's a TV movie is like there's obvious built-in fade outs for commercials. Yes. You know. Now this is the movie. Is there was a couple like, points. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now I know why there are fades. Yeah. I've black. seen some stuff. Um, you know, when they remaster these things now, where they actually edit those out or fade, you know, they fade blend them or whatever. So yeah. you mm-hmm. hear the music from the the shot right. that was going to commercial fading in over the next shot. Um, Who directed this? Uh, Frank De Felita, Felita, okay. Frank De Felita, and um, do we know Frank? Uh, to be honest, I don't. I I don't know what else uh, he's done. J D. Fiegelson, I think, was the guy who wrote it. Um, I think he wrote it as a feature, chopped it around, and eventually it was picked up by the CBS uh, TV uh, network. You know, because for you know, the younger listeners don't remember when there was movies on TV, like all the goddamn time, they would have feature films that they'd buy, yeah. theatrical mm-hmm. stuff, and they did it for television, and they would make TV movies because it was like... Isn't that how it started? Like, licensing... I mean, when TV first came around, like movies putting on TV because they had yeah. nothing else to put on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then, uh, yeah, like live live broadcasts. Yep. Remember those that were, you know, they do live performances of 12 Angry Men or yes. Fail Street right. or something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, and it kind of, you know, event television and that kind of thing. Yep. Um, but, I, you know, when you were saying about the uh, commercial breaks, I guess the thing that I, you know, it's like you can see it as a limitation that there's, mm-hmm. you know, you got to be, you got to do it in 101 minutes, right? Mm-hmm. That is locked. You have to do it in these, I think it's like five act breaks, right? And each right. one of them, it's like, well, you got about 20 minutes in the first one mm-hmm. where you have to set your story up, you got to set up all your characters and you have to get to the hook in t- exactly 20 minutes. Right. I mean, Before it's that like, first commercial break comes on. Yeah. I mean, so it's people like will a, stick around. You have to follow that structure like pretty rigidly because yeah. there's going to be a commercial break in there and that kind of teaches screenwriters the efficiency of you know telling a story mm-hmm. <laughs> you know which is i guess kind mm-hmm. of why i like you know looking back on some tv movies and stuff um tv horror movies from this era it seems like there's uh 
handful of them that are well regarded. We know what they are because they're the ones that have survived and keep getting like uh, you know HD remasters, yes. right? So you have uh, Trilogy of Terror. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I forgot that that you've was. You've got yeah. uh, uh, Salem's Lot, mm -hmm. Toby Hooper's yep. Salem's Lot. Yeah. You've got The Night Stalker. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody seems to love The Night Stalker. Mm -hmm. um, another one would be um, Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, which was remade. Guillermo del Toro remade. Yes. Right. Um, I remember another one. No, I can't remember the title of it, but man, that thing was creepy. It creeped me out when I saw these because I was seven years old when I saw this. Yeah. Um, How'd you feel about this at seven years it old? It spooked the fuck out of me and I it disturbed me, you know, because it's, it's a ghost story, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. That's what we're, we're going into. Um, and I think it is the first um, movie to deal with the idea of a phantom scarecrow. Okay. I mean, probably. How many of those have you seen? Phantom Scare... I mean, well, there's... Killer Scarecrows, Phantom Scarecrows... There were a couple that I used to see in the video store way back in the day, but having looking them up now, there are a lot of Scarecrows. Do you remember Scarecrows? I think that's the one. <laughs> that's the one that's with, like, the, the, one the bank robbers. Were they bank robbers who are trying to get away, and they end up in this, like, field of all these, oh. like, possessed Scarecrows? There's Night of that the Scarecrow. Cool. Night of the Scarecrows. Okay, that's the other one, because I always confuse it, because when you said Dark Night of the Scarecrow, I'm like, Night of the Scarecrow? I'm like, no, Dark Night of the Scarecrow. <laughs> Big it was uh, uh, Scarecrow, which I think eventually led to the Scarecrow Gone Wild. That was like a goofy so, one. Oh, is that, that where like he starts goes to spring break? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starts oh, flashing yeah. everybody. <laughs> yeah. Scarecrow's gone Scarecrow's wild. Gone yeah. wild. <laughs> they take the bags off their heads and unbutton Whoa, their plaid shirts. Wall. Hey, hey, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's like the image I got. It was like like a censorship bar over his chest of the Scarecrow. Right, yeah. Well, this like this the image of like the scarecrow, right? Is like this mm -hmm. kind of uh, it, it's like a it's not only a midwestern thing; it's not only an American thing, is it? Like a scarecrow is just like inherently creepy. It oh, sounds yeah. creepy. It's a scarecrow, right? Right. I mean, scare right there in the title, scare, and its point is to scare things. I mean, yeah. obviously crows to get them off the arm, but they they never. I've never seen a scarecrow that didn't look a little ominous, a little weird, a little. Ugh. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's their point, but it's just like, you always think of kind of something like this. It's just like, well, you know, what if what if it was alive? Because before this, I guess, like, you had the Wizard of Oz scarecrow, yeah. right? It was the yes. kind of kindly version of a scarecrow. My dad was telling me about, because I texted him about this, because he is like, likes weird scarecrow movies like this. And I was like, have you seen this one? And he said no, but he told me about one he used to watch as a kid. And this is one of those things where, from like, the 60s, where like... It was meant to be innocent, but looking back on it, you're like, that's horrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it was a TV movie called The Scare, uh, called the Scarecrow of Romney Marsh, otherwise known as Dr. Sin, alias, oh, alias the Scarecrow. And I got to oh. just show you guys what this looks like, because this is meant to be like kind of like an adventure romp, not like a horror thing. Yeah. But oh. this Scarecrow is fucking horrifying. Yeah, that's not. Uh, ooh, I don't, I don't it, like yeah. that. It's got I like, bl like black and white face that is like. The scarecrow Just, of Romney Marsh. Yeah, and that's yeah. what my dad always talks about this. So now I got to dig this up and yeah. do a deep dive into scarecrow I, lore. I, I do think remember. So. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, I'm going to go home and, and be like, "What was? What's the history of the scarecrow? Right. Like, where did it first come about? Is it American? Is it? it, it, it come from somewhere else? Like, I suppose I should have done this beforehand, but right. now I'm going to deep dive into. It. We'll give you a report next week. Yeah. Um. All right. So who do we have in this movie? Um, Besides from Charles Durning. Well, I mean, it is Charles Durning's movie, it, right? I mean, I mean it like, really is. I didn't know it was going to be, but it really is his movie from like start to finish. Uh, we, I mean, we've got Charles uh, Charles Durning, uh, uh, Tanya Crow. Oh, is that the little girl? Little girl, mm -hmm. Tanya Crow. I remember seeing her in this, and then my parents were a big, they watched the evening, like primetime soap operas, right? Mm -hmm. Like gotcha. Dallas and, uh, right. and Knott's Landing. Knott's I remember Landing. her. Mm -hmm. She was a teenager or early twenties when she was in okay. Knott's Landing for I think ten years. So wow, yeah. And we've also got Larry Drake. Yeah. Yes. Have we put him on the wall? Yes, we have. Very oh, good. Hey. Well deserved. Thanks to MF Man, the Keeper of the Wall, and Sean's uh, powers of recall right here. What are the three Dark movies? Man. Yes, we did Dark Man and Doctor Giggles. Giggles. And Dr. Giggles with this movie. Nice. So uh, ah. you're you're the uh, all right. The certificate is in the mail. We're gonna have the photo up on the wall here in no time. Indeed. Uh, He's one of those people I saw at a convention that I regret not meeting now. Because, like, man, I bet he has some good stories. And, like, he's like his characters are kind of iconic. 
Yeah. You yeah. know? He does play some good He's got a good look to him. Yeah. I mean, Laird, once you see him, you're like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. Well, I always wonder if this one, because uh, he plays, um, you know, a guy with uh, mental disabilities and this, and then he basically, I think, capitalized on that or was typecast for a while because he was on L.A. Law uh, right. playing. And so that was kind of like, you know, his niche for a while until I think Dark Man came around and kind of gave him like this. I'll bet. He's yeah. like, yeah, I want to take this villain, villain career. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. he did that, uh, Robert G. Durant, in mm-hmm. three Dark Man movies, right? Mm-hmm. Two. Two Dark Man movies? He came back in the second one because it's, I mean, it's called The Return of the Durant. The Return of Durant. Right? But yeah. he definitely, he dies in that one. And then Dr. Giggles, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, we also have, uh, Jocelyn Brando. Jo- which one was Jocelyn Brando? That was the mom. Of the daughter? Uh, no, of the... Of Bubba? Of oh, Bubba's yeah. Okay. Mom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 That was, You uh, can see in the eyes. Marlon's, Marlon's sister. Marlon's sister. Which, <laughs> we've talked about celebrity sibling draft before on this mm. podcast. Wow, didn't True. even know she was in the running. I had no yeah. idea. I had no idea we could yeah. put her in there. Yeah. But that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, when you look her up, she's been, you know, in classic Hollywood stuff, like, mm-hmm. since the 50s or whatever. I and bet. She lived until, I think she was in her 80s, uh, 2005, I think she died. But, uh, yeah. She's good in this. Yeah. I know, like, that's, a, I guess, the thing. It's like, you got very solid people, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Lane Smith is also in this movie. Yes, he is. Lane Smith, we all know from... And we were just discussing this last night. I mean, uh, for me, my cousin Vinny and uh, son-in-law, mm-hmm. I mean, he's been in uh, tons of stuff. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's what I, I yeah, remember it was just, from some of my favorite roles. He wasn't in... Um, Oh, he was in Red Dawn. You remember he was the mayor. In, I don't in know Red if I've Dawn, actually the, seen the Red spineless, Dawn. The uh, spineless mayor in, in Red Dawn. He's good at spineless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's good He's good at being a bad guy. I always remember, and of course, I'm going to announce the, the V TV series. Of course. Yes, it everything comes back to comes V. Back was to everyone v. in V? <laughs> yes. Every well, single person was in V at the time. He wasn't in the, the two miniseries. He was in the runoff, like, uh, the actual okay. part-time v. show. Yeah, Nathan Bates was his character's name. <laughs> I remember that for some reason. Um Okay, so uh, well, what, uh, what what's going on here? How do we how do we get into this movie? What is the central idea that starts off Dark Knight of the Scarecrow? I mean, it starts off innocent enough. Uh, too innocent uh, for too this. In- you just know shit's going south. Yeah, because you know it starts <laughs> it's off. Just, it's a it's a lovely, beautiful day in a nice field and field of daisies. Yes, field of daisies. Little girl and her. Uh, I mean, her friend Larry Drake are playing in yes. a field. And again, as you said, he is uh, uh, mentally disabled at that point. He's, yes. he's a child himself, as his yeah. mother yeah. would say. Yeah. So they're they're playing in the field and everything. Um, then they end up they're being spied on because we get yeah. the we get the classic shot of the circles, the binocular mm-hmm. shot, and uh, Charles Durning is spying on them. Charles Durning is a mailman in this movie. Very important. Remember, a he's mail a mailman. Man. <laughs> uh, his learn- authority is extremely limited. Limited, but. You understand why he took that job later on when you see his room. Yeah. This makes this me is concerned. An, right, yeah, because this is an army man. And this is an army man who's no, no longer in the army. Or is that, okay, so, because uh, I'm getting this, but was he in the army or he, he wanted to be? Ooh, okay, that would make that more sense. Almost, uh, that maybe there's a way I read it, but I, I suppose that would make more it either way. That would make more sense as to why he treats this the way he does, because he is a... Uh, it could go either way, actually, because he's always in his mailman uniform. Mm-hmm. Like he treats it like he's part of yeah. a unit, a part of the military. He's got his jeep that he drives around in, like he's going on. Yeah, missions. a mail jeep. Has anyone seen right. a mail jeep before? Exactly. I wonder if they uh, did that purposefully. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Fine, but, but they definitely did it purposefully because of army. It's just a stuff weird like choice because there's not a lot of storage in a jeep. Right, but so, it's a very small town yeah. full of morons. That's true. But we'll get, yeah, we'll get <laughs> That's there. true, and I'm sure he does have to go off-roading based on how spread out the people right. are. Right, so. find a dirt road yeah. to deliver some mail. But yeah, he is He, he is in his head. He is a colonel. He is, he's like, he's, he's got the mission. He goes yeah. around. But also the mayor and also the police chief. He thinks right. he is all authorities. Yes. Like, yeah. He yeah. is the authority. Yeah. I know it's the, the, the thing I love about, I guess, the you know, it's like, I'm sure some of it was there in the script and some of it is there in the direction. And some of it is suggestions from Charles Durning, mm-hmm. but like they really build this character out like yeah. in, in 
he's got the picture of General Patton, mm -hmm. right? You know, mm -hmm. but we see it after we've already seen him riding into battle with the pith helmet on yes. oh and God. all that, and it's like, mm -hmm. oh look, he looks like Patton. Yep. <laughs> you right. know, then later you're yep. confirmed. It's like, oh, okay, right? Because he's yeah. got this thing. <laughs> yeah, because the way it starts out, like he, I mean, he, for some reason, we get right, we're right in the thick of it at this point mm -hmm. because he is suspicious of. Um, Oh, what's uh, Larry Drake's? Bubba. Character? Bubba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bubba, yeah. who's Larry Drake's character. He's suspicious of Bubba, uh, that Bubba's going to do something bad. Yeah. W whether he's been given reason or not, we don't really know at this point, mm -hmm. but they don't like him. It comes off as prejudicial hatred. Yeah. Just, yes. I mean, this guy, and, you know, it's like, you you look at this character, and, I mean, he is, basically, when you think about it, the, the lead character of the, the mm -hmm. movie mm -hmm. Just like a uh, unrepentant piece of shit. Like, I mean, you hate this yeah. man, right? Yeah. And I always think that that's got to be like, you know, for an actor to to go like, okay, yeah, I'll do this part. I mean, like, people are going to hate you. Like, you, you know, if you play this yeah. well, if you they're going right. to hate you. <laughs> You're just as but awful. But at a certain being. point, unless the whoever's, you know, uh, uh, the people that ha end up hating him for this role, unless they're like um, threatening to him or someone, mm -hmm. but he's got to like that. As soon as like I did my job well, yeah, I did yeah. well because these people don't like me because of that role I played. Yeah, I mean it does. It's you know it it humanizes him. He's still an evil bastard, right. you know. I mean, but that's like the 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 nature of human evil mm -hmm. is like this guy, <laughs> this uh, you know who wants to be something important and isn't, and just right. you mm -hmm. know uh, hates uh, Bubba. And I mean, you know, it's implied that he's a pedophile or if not implied. directly, then yeah. he at least the, the Bubba's mom, you mm -hmm. know, believes that like, I saw you looking at that little girl, you yeah, know, that is the only mention of it mm -hmm. in the movie. And it, I don't think anything else in the movie kind of goes that way towards that. Is that why he hates Bubba in the beginning? Is that why he's spying? Is he actually watching her and Bubba's always there that and he yeah. hates be Bubba it. for being there? The fact that right. she pals around with Bubba and not with him. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, there's like, that. Yeah. That, I mean, that's there. This yeah. guy would have committed a mass shooting. Had he, you know, right? in like modern society, this is totally the type of guy that Probably. would shoot up a, any public space. It just, Probably. He's because he just wants so, like you said, Colin, he wants so much to be like a part of authority and he's mm. not. And those are the kind of people that snap. Like, mm. but at this this town, like this town. deplorable people left and right. My God. Is it like, you know, we thought the people in Pumpkinhead 2 Blood Wings were bad. <laughs> this one's, this is just as bad. Is this the same town? Is this the same <laughs> shitty universe? It, um, probably. My God. Well, because you know? these people are ready at the drop of a hat to go kill this guy. Yeah. Well, they're so saying, trigger happy. Not the whole town, though. Specifically, there's like the four, these four Mob guys. justice guys. Yeah. 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 But, and the movie tries to balance them out with like, I guess you have on the side of good and decency, you've got uh, uh, Mary Lee, the little girl. Mm -hmm. yep. You've got Bubba's mom, Mrs. Ritter. Mm -hmm. You've got the district attorney, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they're like the only real right. other counterpoint mm -hmm. characters, right? Yes. Um, but yeah, so what what happens? Why are we talking about mob justice in this movie? Well, they always suspected something was going to go wrong with Bubba, and uh, an accident occurs. Um, Mary Lee and Bubba stop by. I mean, they're walking home, and they see that uh, because because the big thing in town is that someone got a fountain. Yeah, like in that's an yard. eventful yes. day in this town. Yeah. It's like, oh, they got a fountain. And yeah. she's like, like, let's go in there and look. And, you know, of course, Bubba's like, I'll get in trouble because, yeah. you know, people will blame me for all this type of shit. Mm -hmm. He says it in far less words. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, all right, I'm going to go in. You look out. And it's uh, like a okay. fence. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's not just fence. a fountain. There's like 13 gnomes, a lot of gnomes. scattered about. Yeah. Like it is a whole shots. landscaped yard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's and, very beautiful. Yes. You know, for. Yeah. And I'm sure that this is like. Uh, probably the richest person in this area because they can be. afford all this stuff. Right, you know, outdoor yeah. water. Yeah, <laughs> oh. but it's it does seem to be like a desert or an arid community. Very, it feels very, very dust bowl yeah. at times very in this true, community. Yeah. yeah, um, and Mary Lee is a little bitch that just causes all the problems in this fucking it movie. Does, yeah, kind of at the beginning you're kind of just like, well, she's kind of the cause of most of this yeah. shit. That she's like the reason that you know. 
Because she's calling like you're just a scaredy cat, and you know she's being kind of an asshole. Yeah, like a little bit. So I have a hard time trouble. feeling sympathy for this girl sometimes. <laughs> right, I was you like, know? yeah, because she ends up going and uh, and looking at the fountain and everything, and then pretending to smoke a pipe for ten minutes. Yeah, because mm-hmm. one of the one it's of the, hilarious. It's hilarious. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at her audience. Uh, yeah, of course I mean, it's hilarious, yeah. but. But uh, there happens to be uh, uh, a very nice dog and a very vicious sound effects machine. Yeah, yeah. that dog also was in not this barking. yard, yeah. <laughs> which yes. is wonderful. And I like that they said just get a black dog, and so they have a black lab, the most like yeah. n- yeah. non-menacing dog yeah. ever. Right. And they put a chain on its neck to make it look more like a junkyard yeah. dog. Yeah. And it barks a few times is... and everything. But yeah. and, but so and so she's starting to freak out because yeah. you know she's going to get attacked. And uh, Bubba uh, Kool Aid Man's through this fence. Yeah, he you know, does to go and save her, and then you hear. Uh, you hear like the the altercation between him, Bubba the dog, and Mary Lee as we get reaction every sh- shots, reaction shots of every, every gnome. gnome. <laughs> it's like they watch the carnage unfold. Yeah. Yes. I, the only thing it was missing is like a blood splatter coming on. No, one there of was faces. so much of this of that type of shot in this yeah. movie. I'm like, we really didn't get a blood. Whoosh, yeah, because you know, it's TV. I'm just like, it's, I guess yeah, it's, right. it's, it's yeah. TV. Well, yes. I mean, I guess that's the thing to ask now when you're watching this. Obviously, you've seen. Much more hardcore kind of thing. So kind of going back to this, because, you know, this seems like what old Hollywood would do. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't, you know, it saves you an effect, I guess, uh, practically, right? Oh, yeah. But I think also it's like you're shielding the viewer from seeing the horror. And so we whip pan away from the the attack. Yeah. Yeah. But I also think it helps the continuity of this movie to not show exactly what happened. Yes. You know, I yeah. think it benefits yes. the narrative later, later yeah, on. Yeah. 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 But yeah. seeing all those gnomes is like they're witnessing the horror. Yeah. And like, they can't look away. They have <laughs> yeah. to stare. Right. Yes. They're stuck stationary. <laughs> yes. They, they have stories. Yes. They've seen horrors you couldn't imagine over the years. <laughs> they hold the history of this town in their eyes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, the at, at the very end of the credits, it should have just been like a slow, slow, pan. slow zoom in on the gnomes. Yes. And then one of them just. Turns a little bit and yeah. they cut to black. Yeah. You're just like, oh shit! Yeah. They did see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, uh, yeah. So uh, Bubba then shows up at a, a neighbor's house mm-hmm. and he's carrying and her mother, the, the bloody. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. It's, he mm-hmm. goes to her mother's house. Yeah, it takes her home with mm-hmm. the, her bloody body in his arms, and he says, "You know, Bubba didn't do it." Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the news travels fast, and so, so fast. this is when uh, I think someone heard someone scream, <laughs> and then they were like, "She's dead!" Yeah, yeah. and that was it. Well, I mean, we, yeah. So it's it's Lane uh, Smith is a hawker, right? Hawker, and then yeah, uh, uh, Charles uh, Durning as Hazel Rig, right? Mm-hmm. And yes, and so they're like the 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 first two. Mm-hmm. Hawker has said to Hazel Rig, it's like, well, you know. I don't want him around that little girl, but there's a limit to like how far I'm going right, to go. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. kick him around a little bit and make fun of him, but mm-hmm. as far as I'm willing to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So meanwhile, Hazel Rig's like, it should be permanent. Mm-hmm. Yep. We got to do something permanent it's to like, keep the, yeah, I know. So and in the, the quickest escalation I've ever heard, seen, uh, he comes to the post office and tells him, you know, he, he killed that girl. She's dead. Hazel Rig, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> it finally happened. She's dead. And it's funny because they were literally just this morning saying, like, it's going to happen. Well, He's going to get, you But know. they do in that scene yeah. with, like, well, what if he did something? And like, yeah. well, then it'd be different. You yeah. know what I'd do? I'd yeah. have a reason. You right. Know? right. So, and but this mailman <laughs> pulls the gun out of his well, dress. First, he, shuts down first the, he pulls the window down in the post office, right. closed for business. This man yep. shuts down the post office for probably five counties. <laughs> yeah. Right there. Uh, yes. Yep. Uh, because mob justice has closed the post office office yes, today. Yes, it has. Pulls open a drawer and loose pistol in, loose, it, in the yeah, back of the post office. Pistol. Grabs it and storms out. And I, like, this happened so quickly I'm like, wow, we, hold on, we yeah. need to slow down <laughs> over here. I'm right, and yeah. then we're loading up the trucks yes. going out because yeah. they get With the, the pith helmet and everything, right? right? Yes. He's in the back, yes. like, going down. They yes. drive up to the next guy. Oh, he, he sees him coming down the road and he's like, I know exactly what's going <laughs> they on. They all run out with their guns. Right. They get the do- gets the yes. dogs into the back of the yes. truck. They've been waiting for this day. Like, nobody called anybody. Like, they just knew. It's like, Ooh, it's like a spidey sense. Earlier. If I show up in the back of this truck, <laughs> you get the dogs and we go. Yeah, right. Yeah, this is planned out. They all know when they see that helmet, it's yeah. murder time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this helmet on the back of this and truck. And they do. Time to go. I think they also like they do in the dialogue. You know, they set it up that like everybody's meeting over at the the sheriff's forum in a posse. Yeah. But it's like no, no, we're not going over there. We've, we're going to go get the dogs. We're going to take care of this ourselves. So yeah. they are separating them as like they're they're uh, this like vigilante mm-hmm. unit. Yes, and we. Have have seen no law up till this no point. law right. we don't, like for a little while act. yeah we yeah. don't see any law so bubba hightails it back to his uh 
his house. Yeah, this is quite a trek for him. He's going to run through fields and woods and over streams and everything. And Which, why did they need the dogs to track him if he just went back to his house? In case he went somewhere else. Because apparently they have done this before. The dialogue mm-hmm. tells us that, like, the last time that, you know, they chased him down, they played the hiding game. And so yeah. they're going to play the hiding game again. Um, and you realize in hindsight that this is absolutely the worst. Like, why would she do this? And I, I'm assuming like she doesn't know the gravity of the situation because right. Bubba's explaining it to her. And so yeah. doesn't know that like, you know, they think that this girl is dead, that right. they think, you know, he killed her and that right. they're coming for his blood. So she goes and she hides him in this scarecrow in mm-hmm. the field that of course mm-hmm. the dogs end up leading them right to it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, the scarecrow. Freak the shit out of me. Just it's so scary this. looking. Yes, this Why? is a great... Uh, the hollow eyes and mouth. Like, I'm like sorry, spring. this is way better than Baghead Jason. Like, yeah. this, like is this is what Baghead Jason should have looked like, yeah. you know? Yes, um, uh, and um, I sit here disappointed that we didn't get more of it. Yo, yeah, oh yeah. It is a, it because is, of the way this movie goes, <laughs> yeah. it, 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 we the scarecrow seen more. shows up in a field... And not until the very end does it actually kind of become a character. Yeah. And you don't get a look at that face other than this part that we. But Larry Drake's right crazy eyes yeah. inside oh, the mask yeah. right, are so good. It's a, it's a great kind of setup because the uh, the dogs they're, they're, they have his trail and they, it leads him to the scarecrow and no one thinks that they're just like oh the dogs they're kind of nuts and they're you know this is nothing but then just like the slow realization uh, for Charles Durning when he goes up to him about what it is and then he see when we cut to larry drake's eyes i'm like Mm -hmm. jesus christ because it is unnerving his wide eyes coming through that terrified out Mm -hmm. of his mind terrified yeah because you're like how much does he understand it well he knows that they're gonna Mm -hmm. you know not just hurt him i think you know at this point um and i mean they've got this guy he's tied to a post yeah, and Charles Durning, you know, they're all armed, and Charles Durning pulls out the gun and uh, and starts shooting, and the other guys, it's like almost kind of like nervous starting to shoot, but nope. apparently they shoot him twenty one times. We're told Ooh. in the courtroom mm-hmm. later on. Yep. So, I mean, this guy's blown apart. I mean, mm-hmm. as far as TV Dead. goes, yes, <laughs> yeah, bloody enough for TV. Mm-hmm. This was tragic. I mean, you know, for a seven year old when I watched this, <laughs> yeah, uh, this bothered me. I <laughs> like, I, yeah, off it's the horrifying. Charts. Yeah. <laughs> this bothers me now, knowing yeah. the character beforehand and yeah. what happens to him. Ugh. It's well orchestrated, yes. you know what I mean, friend? This is why, and that's where the first commercial break, I think, comes in as they find mm-hmm. out on the radio after they've shot the, his, this guy uh, that, uh, hey, we the, 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 the search got called off because right. it turns out she's fine. She's and absolutely Bubba fine. saved her she life. She just left the clinic. <laughs> she's and, and she said, and she even like fessed up to like, yeah, I went in the yard and the dog attacked me. So like, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. everything is known except to these guys who have just murdered. I so like they, that they get the call over the radio like the second after they right, finish shooting yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right then. And you see all these guys like reacting to this because it's like, Fuck. well, now, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, they're in kind of they're in a state of shock <laughs> yeah. at this point because they were kind of loopy to begin with. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, um, Charles Durning grabs the yeah, he's trying to figure out what to do. He grabs the pitchfork off the truck and he puts it in uh, Bubba's hands, the scarecrow's yeah. hands. He'd be like he had a weapon. Like, he's trying to give himself excuses at this point. Now, I know that the movie is, you know, obviously a, a giant miscarriage of justice is going to occur when this mm-hmm. goes to court. You yes. know, that uh, the guy is all get off because there's no witnesses and he can't say that what they said. They say he's threatening him. Them, He threatened them with a pitchfork. Yep. It's one of those things you just kind of have to go with in order for the movie to happen. But it's mm-hmm. like, okay, that's very unlikely. That, right. <laughs> you know, a like, guy tied to a, a post armed with a pitchfork, like really. Who's uh, also mentally disabled. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they do get off. I mean, this is, you know, the way that it goes. And the mom. When they leave the courtroom. This is what another adds another level as to why you hate Ooh. these people, especially Charles Wright, because they come out and they're just smiling. They're very happy. They're cheering. They, yeah, yeah, they're very happy that the they townsfolk beat it. you're saying yeah, the, town, the like, townsfolk are cheering, but those guys are just happy as clams yeah. that they got off on this. They yeah. don't even let the DA make his like statement. They cut him off and be like, "Oh, well, they're serving fried chicken right now at the restaurant or whatever." I, that's what I was thinking about. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh my like God, that's cold. These people, yeah. 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 So cold. you're like, okay, they, and then they, they go they, out to celebrate. They go out to dinner to celebrate yep, they get, getting get away drunk with and laugh murder. About fried yeah. chicken. Yep. Yep. As the demon wind kicks up, it, yes. yeah, we love a, we love a good wind. 
I, no, I like to call wind. it the justice winds. <laughs> the, justice the winds of justice yeah, are yes. blowing through this town. Yeah. Yes. This is like the setup for like a Tales from the Crypt story. It, we yeah. were talking this, about this that the other night. Like yeah. That, yes. <laughs> I actually think this movie did what Halloween Ends wanted to do better. Huh. It, this movie is a better movie about mob justice, I think. <laughs> um, because... Like it kept well, it on a more smaller just, scale. Which it is did, better. and like, but just imagine this movie, like, but Michael Myers instead of the Scarecrow, right? Like, Ooh. like that. This is the better version of Halloween Ends because, like, the thing with Corey Cunningham in that movie. I mean, you can go listen to our whole episode <laughs> on it. But it's he wasn't sympathetic enough of a character. Mm. Does that make sense? Whereas yeah, well, in this movie, it does not get more innocent than Larry Drake, right? right? You know, yeah. like, and you, you almost want your. Weird to say, you're almost glad that the character is gone at the beginning because, like, I couldn't watch a whole movie with him. It, it'd be it did, tough. Yeah, it, it's just yeah, it's tough yeah. for me. I like, yeah. I can't. I don't like. Yeah. The, kind of when when uh, that type of character character and when they do bad things to them. It yeah, really it's rough. really yeah. rough. Yeah. 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 So I'm really glad. Well, that's yeah. what, I mean, it's manipulative. It is very yeah. much I mean, so. But but I don't care. It like it work. You know, it, it works. works. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. you, you just feel terrible. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> um, you feel terrible, and then you feel hate. And then you're like, characters. yeah, it's like okay, I don't care what happens mm-hmm. to these guys. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um. So one by one, uh, the guys begin seeing. A scarecrow mm-hmm. in their field, you know. I like it. It's mm-hmm. it's done in that kind of uh, like I always it to me it, it always draws attention to me. It's like a Steven Spielberg thing, and obviously it's like an old Hollywood thing. You always see the guy come out of the house. And he's doing something. He looks off in the distance, mm-hmm. and we watch. Then there's like a, a faraway shot of him. So you just basically pull back, and he walks right up to the camera, staring, and we're like. So it gives you that time. It's like 30 seconds or whatever, where you're like, what is he looking at? Yes. Right. Finally, you get the reverse and out there in the distance. Just in the distance. <laughs> and they keep it in the distance. Like they never show it. Uh, they get close to it, but they only show it from behind yeah. at that point. And so they keep mm-hmm. it at a distance. It's good. Again, I it's a good design for a scarecrow. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see more of it. But I mean, maybe they're just keeping it at base. Like, we know you want more when you're yeah. over here. But I think that that's the thing that like pre CGI, it seemed like uh yeah, I was watching actually the commercial for Halloween two the other night, mm-hmm. uh, the trailer for that, and like they do they take pains not to show mm-hmm. Michael Myers' face in mm-hmm. the in the trailer for yeah. Halloween two. <laughs> Even though there's a whole movie with him in it, and yeah. you know what it is, yeah. but hey, you yeah. still gotta tease it. There's still yeah, it's like you gotta you want to see this you got to come to the you got to pay the full admission you got to yeah. sit there the whole time <laughs> you know, whatever to see it we'll give it to you you got to come to mm-hmm. us um the little girl has a little subplot where um you know her parents aren't telling her that bubba is dead yeah which i thought was an odd choice she's but gonna find out in like, this town yeah someone's gonna say something yeah they, i mean i think everybody in town knew that they were friends what would you, like do they think she would just never see her friend again and be totally fine with it like she's gonna ask to see him eventually yeah. they hang out all the time it sounds like yeah these parents are they they dropped the ball i'm They're sorry just, uh, just don't tell her yeah, yeah. Just, just let it lie. let, let it yeah. lie <laughs> if we ignore it the problem will go away yeah yeah let's go to bed well okay do they know he's dead oh, they know he's dead. they know he's dead. yeah i think okay. everybody okay. knows he's dead gotcha. at this point okay yeah because they're like, now that it's over, you know. Yeah. But I mean, um, and what she's supposed to be like seven or eight years old, yeah. something yeah. like that. Um, she, but she is awakened by the justice wind that, uh, <laughs> and goes over to the house looking for Bubba. Have you ever actually snuck out of your room in the middle of the night oh, as yeah. a kid? At any age? Well, not, at any oh, age. in high school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. not yeah. at that age. Yeah, okay. not at like seven or eight. No, yeah. like, but oh, maybe um, to like. Maybe I'm not like where, where'd you go? Like, did you hop in a car or were you were you trekking would, across? Town I would to walk go somewhere? down the block and then hop in a car. So okay, the car was wasn't in front of my house. Yeah. OK, because, yeah, she's <laughs> yeah. on a trek through uh-huh. fields and towns and everything. Yeah. And it's just like this is the middle of the night for this. little. But girl, I guess right? like, I just assume this is what it's like in small towns. I mean, you yeah, can just yeah. do shit like this. No one locks their doors or anything. Yeah, right. You know, true. we live in too big of a city for yeah. anything like this. But right. Yeah. It yeah. harkens back to a more innocent time. But she just walks truly. into my, the uh, Bubba's mom, Mrs. Ritter's house. Yeah. Didn't yeah. learn her lesson about trespassing the first time yeah. and just lets herself in it, this house in the middle. Would have really been funny if another dog attacked her. Yeah. She went yeah. Yeah. And it just keeps happening to her. Would have been. But that's a that's a Zucker Brothers movie right, right there. Well, Mrs. Ritter also doesn't uh, get a chance to tell her that, uh, you know, Bubba's gone, but Mm -hmm. child, you don't understand is is she's like runs out like I know where he hides. And so she runs out to the field to the spot where the scarecrow was. And she's like, I've talked to Bubba and he's 
playing the hiding game. Mm-hmm. And this is our first instance that, ooh, something mm-hmm. spooky is going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Slowly start backing away from this little girl. So yeah. there's like this interesting thing going on with these, the guys. Um, right? Like, because the other thing, that, you know, in acting or the writing or whatever that I got, I'm like, did, did they, like, I get the impression that Hazelrig and uh, Hawker. Mm-hmm. They know each each other the best. I would think so. Mm-hmm. Yes. Where the other two guys, Philby are, are and like Skeeter, drinking buddies, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, are like Mister Hazelrig. You know, they mm-hmm. always say, um, right. "It's like Hawker's kind of you know, the smarter one." <laughs> uh, what was his, true? The, um, mm-hmm. Skeeter's the he's the mechanic. He, and yeah, he's, he's the mechanic, and that's the I, I'm guessing it's the only thing he knows how to do. So yeah. I, can, I can fix a car. I and can do anything the else. Dogs. So that was why he was. Right. In, yep. Philby runs a like a grain business or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's got grain silos and the things and yeah. So uh Hawker sees the scarecrow out in his field. And so he of course is like, Well, who's putting it there? So that's where we're going with this, is like who is actually doing this? Who's trying to scare them? Mm-hmm. Uh somebody and, knows. And Hazelrig's always the guy who's like, I totally have an answer for this. Mm-hmm. Right? This is his character, like through everything, as we're just kind of breaking down every uh, you know, defense that he has against the supernatural. <laughs> yes. Right. But I mean, through the entire movie, he is like rigidly, when you're a kid and you watch these things, you're like, well, obviously it's a killer scarecrow. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> to, right. The, the title, ghost. which I'm sure was said, will return to Dark Knight of the Scarecrow yeah, yeah. after this, yeah. which I'm sure was said a million times yeah. when this was broadcast. Oh, yeah. So you know, uh, this is a scarecrow. Yeah. But I mean, I guess like, you know, uh, storytelling, it seems like at that point in time was like, you know, more rigidly like, well, you were going with realism and like, well, there are no killer scarecrows. Right. So mm-hmm. right. somebody's got to be doing this. Right. You know? And so that's the line we ride for the rest of this movie. Like, yeah. Is it a person? Because we have suspects for this. I mean, we have Bubba's mom, whether she'd be physically able to do it or not. But we have Bubba's mom. We have the district attorney mm-hmm. who is all who gave them a little message before they went off and said, like, if I find a shred of evidence, <laughs> I'm going to see you all on death row. Bubba's mom has the there's, there's other forms of justice in this world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Which like being dragged y- out of the court. Which it's like. Uh, yeah, that's Maybe why that, we're here is because yeah. there are other forms of justice. Yeah. The mob justice got us in this. Yeah. 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 I was hoping. Yeah. But when she said that, I was kind of hoping she had like a plan, like she was going to do some like mm-hmm. black magic or some cool shit, right. but she didn't need to. But yeah. but I was hoping she had something up her sleeve well, when she, she said that. But she's very religious, I think, because we see that the, the lay at the beginning of yeah. the, the, the Bubba and uh, mm-hmm. Mary Lee are giving each other or she makes, lay, she makes Hawaiian yeah, yeah. lays for mm-hmm. for them both is laid around the Holy Bible mm-hmm. in, yes. in Mrs. Ritter's place. So she knows that, you know, mm-hmm. the Lord is going to somehow do something. Uh, whether or Eventually. Not the the mm-hmm. demon wind comes from uh, justice wind. Mm-hmm. Is heaven sent or hell bent? Uh, who knows? Heaven sent and hell bent, which is actually <laughs> good. Um, so, Hawker, what, what happens to him after... Uh, I, I like that they all show up at, at they, Hazelrig's place. They do. We, we find out, like, this guy, so he lives at a... Um, a boarding house. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's talk about this living situation. This he lives in a, like, I, I call them flop houses, but he li- he lives in the... Uh, this guy needs to get his priorities straight. You're living in a fucking boarding house at however, what, 60-some years old, right. maybe? You wonder, but you also, I, I wondered if that fit into the military lifestyle that he wants or and or mm. had in that All right. because you know, he lives he lives in a barracks basically yeah. and yeah. then they make breakfast every morning at a certain time and all yeah. that stuff so i think the structure and the order something he wouldn't find if he lived on his own and i think he likes that i think that's why he ends up in a place like this all right, I can go with that. Yeah. So he's yeah. also 60 years old living in a communal kind of living relationship or living yeah. situation. So he, he is not married. He doesn't have right. a relationship, seems to, you know, have his attention on this little girl. He's also, they are making like a lot of moments through the movie that he's an alcoholic, but presents the. Um, right. Nobody, yeah. Because the one lady mentions, mm-hmm. she's like, oh, I forgot you don't drink. She's mm-hmm. like, uh, we've seen him drink a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But see, it's appearances, right? I yes. mean, that's what, like, all of his stuff is about kind of, you know, yes. I'm this decent, upstanding, uh, you know, uh, representative of 
law and order through yes. the right. you know through the mail service. The, uh, I'm mm-hmm. an officer of the government. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he would say that. Yeah. He would say that. Yeah. He would yes. like if he wasn't wearing the uniform. That's how yes. he was like. I am an officer of the government. Yes. I am here. You should have unofficial business because mm-hmm. he's talking about ju- <laughs> earlier on when they're looking for Bubba. They're talking about justice and being official and charging and all this. I'm just like, you're a fucking mailman. Even you have no authority. Nothing. Even Bubba's mom makes mention of it. And meanwhile, I'm shouting the at the screen thing like, official yeah. that you've ever done is lick stare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, love yeah, it. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love that she knows her rights. She like she didn't even say come back with a warrant because she knows this guy can't even get one to get in yeah. her house. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, nope, you you got no business here. I'm gonna shut my door and you can leave. You know, yeah. love it, love it. There is that uh, later he comes back to the house. I always thought that that was like, I mean, you imagine being in that situation. That's got to be like a really tough thing. He's the mailman, mm. and so he has to bring you your mail, yeah. right. even though you know he's the guy who killed your son. Yeah, right. and it's like, well, you know, she's like, just put it in the box. He's like, I can't. You got to sign for it. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just like Jesus Christ. The <laughs> shit that this woman this makes has me to put up with, right? <laughs> yeah, this makes me concerned about male people now. Like, do they? I really hope they do a lot of screening and background checks and shit because, like, not only are they like carrying around sensitive information, but yeah, they know we're like every. Everybody on their route, they know their like names and addresses and yeah. their habits and shit. And it's like, have we had uh, many male men horror movies? The Postman. No, he was no. a good guy in the Postman. I can't, I can't uh, really think of. No. Uh, uh, no, the Postman. I mean, Jacob in Jacob's Ladder was a mailman, yeah. but uh, yeah. not. Uh, yeah, uh, it's not, not like delivering one. bombs to people, and right? Yeah, and shit, no. which. <laughs> Not even that. Right. I'm just thinking Postal, about like the Uwe Bowl movie. Yeah. yeah, it's different. I'm like I'm talking like horror movie. Like, yeah, there is Postal. I'm thinking more from a stalking perspective. Yeah. like if they become obsessed with somebody, is very right. they somebody have access to everything. all there, the information. There is a yeah. very creepy movie that could be made. Yeah, exactly. That. Yes, mm-hmm. I will write it. So it'd just mm-hmm. be the mailman, not the mm-hmm. postman, just the mailman. Mm-hmm. Um, the mailman. I'm sure does there's deliver a... on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm sure there's a better pun in there that we. Oh no, we'll, we'll find have to it. work we'll on it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what Mailman happens horror. to uh, Hawker? What uh, what happens to him? Some I, what do they call it? A, a brusher? Is that what they call it? Brush it? machine. Oh, it, but it's yeah. In it, I thought it was like a hay, hay baler because there's yeah. bales of hay in the. Well, he just put it in the thing because he was working on it earlier, and they showed somebody throwing branches into it or way earlier in the yeah. movie. Because mm-hmm. it's a little montage of everything that happens to every character who dies mm-hmm. earlier on in the movie. Yeah. They show the brusher, they show the the yeah. grain silo, and everything. Yeah. They show everything the, that happens. The we know Philby has a heart condition, right? It's like, mm-hmm. But see, that's what I'm talking about. That kind of economy of character, yeah. right? Like, in the first twenty minutes, it basically all sets all that shit up that mm-hmm. you're going to see later on. Like, I love it when this because you know. <laughs> Like, I, it, it takes so much effort as a writer when you're actually trying to do that, mm. that when it seems like effortless, you're like, well, yeah, that <laughs> took a lot of fucking mental gymnastics for the fucking guy who wrote this right. movie. Yeah. But, get, I mean, but to get it in there and get it good. Yeah. Take mm-hmm. note. People. Yeah. Watch, so, watch this 1981 TV movie and learn how to write <laughs> the fucking scripts. <laughs> well, what happens to him? He, he gets, ends up. Uh, go, ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you go. Ahead. I, I I was just like he get caught in it. I well, don't. He, I don't. He ends up because he comes home uh, after they visit um, Hazel Rig. Yeah. Um. Who tells him don't fucking come here again? All right. Yeah. You look guilty as shit. Yeah. Um. We but, can't be seen in public together. Yeah. <laughs> no. But they all go home and everybody's got the little they're drinking. They've got yeah. the little bottles and everything. Um. So he comes home, but then he's hearing noises. He's um. Does he? He saw the scarecrow earlier, so it's not there now. He goes over and kicks down the empty um, yeah. scarecrow holder, yeah. and then lights turn on in his barn. Mm-hmm. So you got to go check it out, see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And he goes in there, and his 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 brush machine or whatever mm-hmm. is um, was it on? Mm-hmm. Was it? Mm-hmm. And he turns it off, and then he's hearing noises from up in the barn. Mm-hmm. And so he goes up there to check it out, and then. He basically jumps off the top yeah, of this thing yeah. into the thing. And yeah. like there's really no reason he does that he does that slip on a banana peel. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's, he's, doing, he's creeping along the edge of it because he's looking at like this box, which I'm assuming we think that somebody's gonna jump out of it or right. is it. Which is nothing. And, and ends then up being the nothing. machine turns on below him and yeah. he's like, oh, 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 oh. And then he's hanging on the, the light cord, yeah. which is sparking. And yeah. I love all this because he's <laughs> screaming. Like, he, this is a horrifying situation. Right. Sure. <laughs> like, you know, you're going into this yeah. in seconds and there's nothing you mm-hmm. can do about it. He sure would have to, like a high diver, he would have to fit 
so perfectly right. to fall into this thing and die. Pencil formation, yeah. Because otherwise he would just fall yeah. on. You yeah. go one leg in and then it and then breaks the other one and yeah. pulls you down Ooh. and yeah. snaps you. To like... See, this would have been <laughs> not, it hadn't been for TV, this would have been a really good drag him in. Today. Yeah, kind yeah. Kind of like the, um, the judge getting run over by the by the thing in, in Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Like just slowly but surely <laughs> screaming. 30 Days a Night has a good thresher moment, I think. Yeah. When somebody gets thrown into yeah. a thresher because we had CG that and we could do that. Yeah. Um, winter is coming. It is, yeah. Uh, gotta see it before when it's snowy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he's dead and they're like, well, it's gotta be the district attorney. He's, he's the one who's like doing this. So right. uh, then um, Philby sees the scarecrow mm-hmm. and Philby is like, you got me into this. You get me out. I know, like, this is the guy's dead. The other guy, Hawker's dead. Mm-hmm. Somebody knows, and it's beyond trying to scare us. Yep. They're, you know, <laughs> yep. this is he's no like, accident. Get me out of it, or I'm going in. Yeah. And by going in, he's like, I'm going to tell the police. Because mm-hmm. I'd rather do that than die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other guy's just a moron. So he's like, <laughs> well, I think he wants to go in, too. Like, sure. he's the one who's going to crack, probably. <laughs> yes. easiest, yeah. You know? yeah. There's always one in every group of mob <laughs> justice that just, like, can't be trusted with this type of information you yeah. know yep. yeah 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 and that's skeeter mm-hmm. i don't know if i'm calling him I the right know if that's name. i name. think at one point he said skeeter i'm not positive but no, but, he uh, wears, but he wears a <laughs> he wears a hat with a pattern that you always see on the you know the bum who's got the bag on the stick yes the around. bindle yes yeah, yeah yeah it's always it's the that red pattern. with the white polka dots yeah. yeah it's always that pattern yes yeah there's a lot of flannel in this movie a lot, no, lot of plaid a lot, lot of flannel <laughs> yeah. a lot of these are simple country folk yeah uh what happens to philby Philby, I mean, he like runs out and confronts the scarecrow when he sees it. So he's been right there. Mm-hmm. He yeah, but he everyone... takes them out later. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's not gone. There. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then he ends up. Uh, he's working late at night at his mm-hmm. place one night, mm-hmm. and so he ends up uh, hearing noises again. Um, I mean, he goes out to investigate. He sees lights uh, going off in his building. Tries to leave with the car. Car is not working. Um, at does he scene, see something? Does he see the scarecrow? I we think so. we watch him because yes. I think you hear. Footsteps. Footsteps. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he reacts. Yes. And he goes and barricades himself in a silo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he sees the scarecrow. And we hear somebody walking around Mm -hmm. outside, but we don't see anything. And then, of course, the door's locked. He can't get out. Yep. And the silo (laughs) starts filling with grain. Now, do you think you'd be able to move up as it got more full this is a thing that happens a lot it? actually it, yeah, yeah. grain it silo yeah. deaths yeah. are horrifying yeah, I know. but it's like this one or something once yeah you and it, it's hot and there's pressure and yeah. it just yeah it and crushes suffocates. You, it crushes you yeah, and, yeah, it, yeah, and it suffocates Oof. you like Plus the fumes yeah. i think mm-hmm. also yeah. um and grain silos are super combustible and dangerous like they explode sometimes and it's scary but i feel like we have like a handful of every year. this There's every year one, usually two, this oh, time yeah. of year yeah. yeah and it's just it seems like a horrible way to die yeah, horrible. it's like yeah. i just I, when i saw them gearing up for this in this movie i was like oh this is a little too real <laughs> yeah. but it was it was different because the grain silo was empty and it filled up with him in the bottom whereas Ooh. i think a lot of times the dust they fall in, they fall in or the they're on top standing on the top because the top you can't usually stand on but if you take like a wrong step it sucks right. you under yeah. so like I I thought it was interesting that they went with like the the like drowning approach of like in a movie where like your box is filling with water and you got to put your like face up to the top. That's what they did with this, but with grain. Yeah, yeah, which I thought was interesting. But it does find he had a heart attack. We knew yeah. he had a heart problem. That's what the cause of death later. But he would have died really, anyways. Yeah, died yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. But it, I like the way the the both the machines shut off like as soon as somebody's you know the grain silo stops. Like yes. he's very... oh, yeah, you have to stop at the artistic <laughs> yep. one arm still there. Yeah. Yep. It's like, ah, it looks like an accident. Yep. So at this point, right, it's like, okay, who is it? It's uh, It's got to be uh, Bubba's mom is doing it. So, this is uh, the big suspect for, for uh, uh, Ripple Ridge. What's his name? Heather? Who, H- uh, Hazel Rig. Hazel, Hazel Rig. <laughs> Ripple Ridge? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm turning to Colin right now yeah. with the weird names. <laughs> so he goes over to her house yeah. and confronts her by basically sneaking up on her. Well, she's making tea in the other room. Like, yep. well, they set that up because, mm-hmm. you know, you're like, how do you get this to happen? She's yep. got to go out and check because there's a banging door. That's how he got in, right? Mm-hmm. Sets the teapot or the kettle on and then goes and sits in her, you know, chair in front of the fire. And he. Uh, uh, He's behind her. And yeah. the hand comes in through the chair and, you know, grabs her face and like, stops her from screaming. It's, you. it's like, it's you. And he, just, he tries to let go and then she screams and he grabs her again. And he's telling her, it's like, I know it's you, and this is your last. I know I gave you a warning before, but this is your last warning. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, and then 
she dies of a heart attack. They, apparently. Yeah, a lot of heart attack. It, it, this was not out, clear though. enough. They yeah. needed to do a little bit right, more. Right, should have been a little more. You get it. You're like, she did she go a little yeah. bit? Like, you kind of like, yeah. what's happening? And yeah, like, her yeah. eyes went wide, and she went, and I'm like, you should have had like some more struggling. Yeah. And I mean, a heart attack is kind of violent when yeah. it happens, you know, but uh, she passes away. He's freaked out because now, right, it is just kind of like this escalation yes. of, of stuff. I mean, he's already a murderer. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now he's. Well, he's, he's indirectly he's killed murdered her an again. entire family at this yeah. point, <laughs> and then to cover it, he turns the uh, the the uh, the stove the pilot light out, mm-hmm. and the house blows yeah, up. He gases you know. up. Mm-hmm. The, okay, the house blows up. Something blows up. Yeah, it's but a, this okay, is a but television this is a good movie. little explosion. Though. It's a good yeah. explosion, but nice it's definitely mushroom. not a house. Yeah, it's yeah. just like a, it is filmed yeah. as close as possible <laughs> yes. to make it look as big as possible. Well, and I'm sorry, set decorators on this house wreckage. This is some bad set decorating, like the black spray paint on these styrofoam yeah. walls to make it look like it blew up. It was pretty yeah. rough. Sure, because they didn't actually blow any. Yeah, or, uh, and I'm gonna guess they borrowed that explosion from someone. Like, mm-hmm. like we got anything in stock footage yeah. right now? It could be. It looked like a stock footage. Yeah, that yeah. was definitely something that had been filmed before, and like we'll use yeah. that for this. So there's no connection between Hazel Rig and the death of Mrs. Ritter. The no. district attorney's still prowling around, just one shred just of evidence. Me, right. Just, every, we should have gone back to him a little, a couple more times, just for the one shred thing, where he's mm-hmm. just like picking up his mail or dinner. He's like. One shred. <laughs> like, just keep coming back to that theme, like his focus on it. would have been real good. Well, at this One point, shred. Hazel Rig is determined, okay, then. It has to be the little girl. Yeah, he really Which, he's, Okay, he's whatever. Of, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's running out of, so he's he, like, it can't be anything more than that. It's got to be a person. I and mean, he's slowly eliminating all of them. Yeah, until you're like, okay, the little girl. Well, at that point, I think he thought. Because maybe that scene happened earlier. Where he confronts her at the Halloween party. Right. Yeah. There's a Halloween party. He confronts her in this like back hallway while she's playing hide and seek with her friends. It's really creepy because mm-hmm. like, I'm I'm Mrs. Ritter's friend too. And right. You can tell yeah. me about the secret yeah, that secret. she's got. Yeah. yeah. When you start talking about secrets with little, little yeah. No. Nope. And no. she's yeah. like, I know you killed Bubba because Bubba told me. Yep. I still see him. You know. And he's like, you can't be. You know. It's like he's she, dead. He's dead. Uh, and then he runs into the law, right? And looks oh, yeah, the creepy. law shows up for once. <laughs> finally, thank back God. Like, so, yeah, th- no this is when they decide to intervene, huh? Yeah. At this party. Everybody yeah. Else is fine. It's like, yep. you did good for us before, so why don't you go now? <laughs> but the party's up there. Um, but uh, having decided that it's her, mm. I think, well, no, he doesn't, he doesn't come to her yet. Because now he's like, it's Bubba. She told me it was Bubba, and I didn't believe it. Right. We shot him. 21 times but left him in the field and so he's it's him he's the one who's doing it. he's talking to skeeter right yeah yeah and uh skeeter's like i'm getting the fuck out of here like this is and it's like no you can't because like, gonna I got blow a cousin. yeah i got a cousin up in uh wyoming he's got acres and nobody's there yeah i'm you, safe you drive 12 miles in the driveway yep. before you even get to their house oh it's in alabama yeah, yeah or yeah. arkansas or something like something that like, but yeah. uh so in order to prove that it is Bubba, Hazel Riggs' bright, bright idea is, I'm going to prove it to you. We're going to go in the middle of the night, and we're going to dig up his grave. Right. Because, <laughs> so, they're, so they're looking for a body. Like, they want... Uh, what? They're looking for there not to be a body there, right? Right, because like, okay. I mean, it, yeah, Bubba is still right, alive. Okay. This whole thing's been a ruse okay. to basically get them. Because this was a little weird, because it's a TV movie, so they don't show what they claim is in mm-hmm. the casket yeah. after they they bear yeah. so they do dig it up and skeeter so, well, skeeter yeah because he's like if if he's in there if i open this casket then it's only his spirit he said like, <laughs> and there's nothing left but his spirit yeah and you know he opens it up and apparently there's a body in there yeah he freaks out he's like oh my god it's him and you're like what does that mean is there a body in there and right. no i was a little confused i'm like so what's in the thing because we're not showing it yeah, but Hazel Rigg says, like, he can see him, he's like, he there. Saw it. The body's mm-hmm. there. I say, okay. okay. And he's like, then that means I know who it is. It's her. And at that point, I think Skeeter is like, I know what you're planning to do. You're talking about killing this little girl. Yeah. And Hazel Rigg's like, it's almost done, right? Once we kill her, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's going to be over. And he's trying to strangle Skeeter. And then he like, does, because <laughs> there's a fight. There was there was a running run through the, the cemetery and... and Hazel Rig like jumps off a tombstone to tackle this guy. And so they're having a, they scuffle and they fight. 
and he almost I thought he was going to strangle him right there yeah, just to be done yeah. with him and all that stuff. But so why does he stop? Well, he stops because uh, Skeeter isn't going to isn't being convinced. Skeeter is done. Skeeter wants to either be out or go tell someone yeah. or something or other. And that's a loose end, yeah. which Hazel Rigg can't have. Yeah. So yeah. he's like, all right, all right, we'll do it your way. That's fine. Mm-hmm. I understand. We'll go tell the police. But we got it. We can't just leave this, you know, coffin open and this grave dug up. So we got to go fill that in first and then mm-hmm. we'll go do whatever you want to do. I'm just wondering if that was if he had the presence of mind while he was trying to strangle him that like, wait a second, if I just strangle him, because I mean, he could throw him in the grave. Sure. But he's like, no, 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 I got an idea. (laughs) Right. This will be easier than dragging him over and putting him in there. Yeah. 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 So he ends up, I mean, the uh, Skeeter gets back in the thing, shuts the coffin, and then he gets whacked over the head with a shovel. It was a nice touch to have his hat still attached that, to the yes. shovel when he... <laughs> right, yeah, the yeah. blood right. from that it was, as he brings that it back great. up. Mm-hmm. That was pretty good. And so Skeeter's out of the picture. So that means that, it. I mean, this is, you know, I mean, again, this, so this guy has killed three people now, right? Yep. I mean, we're just talking about, like, the irredeemable <laughs> uh, movie villain. Yes. A murder to cover a murder. <laughs> yes. And yeah. it just keeps snowballing, but yep. he's always the guy on top, I guess, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, because I guess, you know, you're talking about, like, you know, it's the presence of will over weaker willed individuals. That's kind of what you're watching. It's just the yes. fact that he can hold sway over these people. Uh Cold Cox uh Skeeter buries him. And yep. so now it's all taken care of. And so then I don't know what was going on here as he's leaving in his uh postal Jeep, right? Mm-hmm. He's drinking and so all the points of view shots are like him careening all over the roadway but yeah. when we see the reverse shot of him driving mm-hmm. he's like just kind of right yeah yeah it's not as crazy from no. from showing him but he's drinking along the way and he's careening he's trying to get out of there i mean but what the, they're putting him in an altered state i guess so like you know what's yes. gonna happen here seems more like you can accept it because mm-hmm. it's like okay well you know he's not operating it. he's got anxiety he's got in, in adrenaline he has just uh, murdered a person <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah for the third time so he sees Mary Lee standing out in the road and is oh. able to stop and then pursues her through the woods, crashes her parents, the car. Her parents are the worst. Yeah, they Keep don't know. Keep track of your child. <laughs> I know. Get it together, folks. Like, your daughter ha- has caused enough problems for this town. The least <laughs> yeah. you can do is keep her inside your house. Yeah, do mm-hmm. something. Because... Shit's maybe t- maybe teach her about death because she's definitely old enough to know that. Or teach her stranger danger at some yeah, point. Exactly. She's almost yeah. been murdered three yeah. times at least. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oy. Well, what what happens? Uh, he 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 chases her, and where does that end up? I think they end up in a pumpkin patch and cornfield do. together. Corn- yeah, this is oh, awesome. I love it. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks pretty great. <laughs> it's good. Mm-hmm. And so she's they're running around. She's hiding. They come upon a, a, a bulldozer mm-hmm. at that point, which. Is that like a thresher? I don't know. The fact it's like that a bulldozer with a thing on it. Yeah, because it's got the front Teeth. end of a bulldozer, mm-hmm. the the whatever, the lift, the jaw, the, yeah, the yeah. thing. But on the back, I appreciate that the the movie always shows you that shot of this like thresher all or whatever going through the oh field. yeah squishing oh, the pumpkins yeah. Yeah. that's like the killer like, to make lines to plant your crops yeah. and everything yeah. but yeah it is chewing up pumpkins <laughs> as it goes along yeah. and you're just like ooh that's ominous because that's yeah. sharp and you could die in that yeah because I mean that's basically saying that's what's going to happen to this guy because right. yeah. the thing starts up okay well, so, she, okay okay Okay. Okay. So here we go. If the now, lights come on like it's Christine. I right, love right, it. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. he ends up there and the lights do come on. Now yeah, he confronts her and she shouts out, Baba, Baba. And then all of a sudden the lights come on. Okay. On this so thing. up till this point, the supernatural element, it could have been someone. Right. It could mm-hmm. have been a person doing this the whole time. Mm-hmm. Right. The first instance we get of this is we see a gear shift in that bulldozer go by itself. Yes. Yeah. And there's and no so, one in the seat. And yeah. there's no one there. So that is the first true. We're telling you mm-hmm. this is a ghost. This yes. is a ghost. So okay. your question is, would the movie have been better without that shot? I No. What I would have... Okay. Uh, you you got to judge the movie based on what it is. But what I would have done, I think they could have done the whole moving thing. And because we end up... Uh, he gets... Um, uh, Hazel Rick gets chased through the field. Again, in a... In a uh, like I said, in a very Austin Powers way where he, if he goes left... 
yes. real fast. Yeah. He's done, he's good, and he can yeah. get away and shit like or, that. But, or Charlize Theron and Prometheus. Yes, yeah, yeah is just, that? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, left or right, either way. Over by the donut, <laughs> yeah, could have just gone yeah. left and been fine, yeah. but whatever. It's a movie. We'll, yeah. we'll deal with it. Well, but, we've established he's not in his right mind. Very so that's true. He's been I'm through a lot. This. Right. Okay, okay, like, there is that. Yeah. They set it up. That, yeah. Yeah. Very and he's true. like, because he's thinking it's the district attorney. I mean, who else could it be? Right. Yeah, Sam. That's, Sam, that's, Sam only, stop right. it. That's the only one yeah, left yeah. at this point. Um, but he gets, he ends up getting chased a lot. You think he's going to get run over and that's going to be it. But he gets chased up to a certain point, right up to the scarecrow. And whoop, we hear a little bit of something. Yeah. And. He bleeds from the mouth, and he's been stabbed by the pitchfork. Yeah, see, I like this. I see, I like this too <laughs> because it's like, it, yeah, you put the fit pitchfork in his hand. Yep, and so the, and that's what got you. Got the, the pitchfork. Now, you, yeah, you wanted this, you got it. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. Now, I would have saved the supernatural element for this part right here because there really could have been and this is 1981 maybe it just wasn't something on their mind or anything like that but it could have been like i was waiting for him to hop off the thing i was hoping they would get and that for the shot. scarecrow to like come alive yeah at that point just yeah. to, just like you didn't know what it was you thought you knew what it was here's what it is yeah the scare it is the scarecrow yeah and it is supernatural at this point because we get as the movie goes on for the next like two minutes we get a, more of that I know it's weird. It well, not weird. I don't know. Like the, it, it just it, it's placed. how it plays with you. Like the effect. Like I think personally, I could have done without the gear lever, shift. the gear shift. Yeah, you, you know. So maybe it is Sam. You know, and then right. you run into the scarecrow that just seems to be set up fortuitously, possibly supernaturally, with the the right. the pitchfork mm -hmm. pointed out. So you run into it, and then. And then he could have gotten off and finished him off, mm -hmm. which is what I thought they could have done. They do what they did do. I did like because he gets stabbed and he backs away from it. And you see, it's still oh, just a regular scarecrow. But you, you know, it, it looks down on the the forks of the pitchfork, and they're all bloody. And he's got his stomach, and then he falls over dead. And then we kind of get a, a a taller, wider shot of what what was happening or what mm -hmm. had happened. Yeah, and the lights shut off. Yeah, so some supernatural power or, or whatever, the lights go off. I mean, right. we know it is because of the gear shift shot. Right. But then, yeah, the movie does keep going. And this was like, okay, you've reached the end, you've killed him, and we've established that there's like a spooky scarecrow. But I mean, again, we're still using inanimate <clears throat> objects, yeah. which I kind of like that kind of, this is like, a. it's now we look at it as a great deal of like restraint, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That it isn't having a moving scarecrow walking around killing people, right. a scarecrow monster, right? It's yes. like, well, what it, you know, it's like, ooh, this is just right. Not even, not even a, supernatural a suggestion that, of a person, yeah, throughout right. the entire movie, right? Yeah. Which I, 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 I do like that. And <laughs> for what it, uh, this whole movie is, I do like that they do do that, yeah, because it, it's different and it's not what you would usually see. Mm -hmm. So, what is the purpose of the end? Is it to establish, you know, without a doubt? Because that's where I'm like, if you take that fucking gear shift shot out, right? This has more effect. Yes. <laughs> at the end, because we hear we see we're, we're a point of view shot, and we hear the footsteps we've heard earlier with uh, Philby. Mm -hmm. Yes. Walking up to her, she's hiding, mm -hmm. and she turns and she looks up and she's like, "Baba," and she sees it, <laughs> and it's still a scarecrow, but then it does look over to her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought and that was like, great. It's like, oh, it's fucking creepy as shit. Right. Yeah, especially with the design <laughs> yes. of this face, yeah. this this burlap mask that is over that is the scarecrow. But yeah. this should be credit to right here. Just him it's turning to look at her and then stops. Right. There should have been like um, a, a bit more of a punch at the end of this instead of like because the, then at the end they. Uh, I think, does he give her a flower? Yeah, there's, yes. there's two shots of a moving scarecrow. One where it looks over at mm -hmm. the camera, basically, yeah. yes. which is, I think, because it's, it's her looking at you, yeah. you know? It's like, oh, God, that's creepy. Yeah. And then from that same shot, it, like, bends over with a... Uh, a daisy, yeah. Yeah, yeah which yeah. they were in the first scene, you know, yeah. picking daisies. Right. Uh, it hands over, and the last shot is just her hand taken right. from his hand, which is good. And I also didn't need her talking more. Oh my god, her talking over the credits too. I'm shut just like, this is ruining up. it. Shut up! Yeah, shut yeah, up! Yeah, shut yeah, up! Yeah. This was so good. Yeah, don't, don't do talk this. Anymore. Yeah. This was good imagery. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well. We, we got another game but we it, can play. It's yeah, like, right. But it was because it was just like stark quiet, maybe a little wind and everything yeah. when he's there. It's just like no, like it was You'd good. Have that kind of that cold, shivery yeah. feeling. Yeah, which is a good, which is the fall, which is Halloween, which is what that. So like. 
they're so I mean it's good but <laughs> I, there, there's other ways they could have done it which would have been like maybe more of a punch but it's still good yeah, yeah. it's good mm-hmm. scarecrow design mm-hmm. god damn it yeah <laughs> well uh, I guess you're gonna yeah, have dark to dark night is over Yep, mm-hmm. but we're gonna the podcast continues. We're gonna tell you whether or not you should watch this movie. What we thought of it, we've kind of broken it down. But what did we think of this movie, and should you watch it? We're gonna tell you. But first, we're gonna read some of your mail, and in order to do that, we're gonna summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail, masters, masters. The mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, sir. I got nothing for him. Hey, I got nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's full of straw. Like, uh, is, is is like Igor's favorite time of the year? Like, is he big? Maybe he's not a big Halloween guy. Maybe he's a big Christmas guy. Who knows? Have we ever talked to him about this? No. No. We should ask him. <laughs> not tonight. <laughs> no. But at some point. At some point. At some point. Okay, well, uh, we should uh, let the good folks at home know how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Giant Freak Show. Or X, formerly Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Uh, by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Uh, and on Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. About Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, Novato, Novato Judoka writes in and says, What? A TV movie on Halloween on the show from Colin? Question mark, <laughs> exclamation mark. Well, well, how the turntables. But can't blame <laughs> yes, you. Yes. There's something about 80s TV movies that were just better then. Uh, yeah. Steve Carney says, This is a pretty basic horror film, but I like it. I'm quite surprised that there aren't more films with killer scarecrows. The sequel isn't great. But you can tell they put effort into it, especially since it came out 40 years after the original. We skipped over that. But yeah, because of the restoration Uh. and DVD Blu-ray release of this movie, uh, because I mean, I guess, you know, like I always thought, like I was the only person who saw it for like years and years. years. It must have had an impact. Yeah. And when it comes out, it's like, oh, everybody loves this thing. And uh, they made a Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, too. The writer wrote Mm -hmm. the new one. I haven't seen it. Interesting. I'm curious. I I saw the poster for it. I'm curious. Yeah. I can't imagine it's any good, but I'm curious. Yeah. And the Scarecrow doesn't look, uh, I mean, it's the same basic three. It is, but it it looks a little more alien than Scarecrow. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, Kryptonian Orphan says... Ooh, this that, artwork alone for this movie it's not looks good. terrible. Yeah. It's not good. Ooh, yeah. my goodness, this is not... No. Yeah, um, that's why I'm wary of it. You know, it's like yeah. I kind of... I dig the first one this enough. This looks very low like, budget, yeah. yes. Uh, Kryptonian Orphan says, The scarecrow design looks like Rorschach went on a bender. He's talking about the <laughs> Watchmen character. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says the sack head killer was popular back in the day, yep. but that's one of the better made for TV horror movies. I personally prefer 1973's Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, but this one is pretty solid, great atmosphere and production value. Yeah, because uh, you figure you had Sackhead Jason, you had yep. the Elephant Man. Mm-hmm. Um, Town the Dreaded Sundown. Town the Dreaded mm-hmm. Sundown, yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I finally watched this last year around Halloween, actually. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I've always, I'm always glad to see horror movies I could possibly show my kids, and this has all the scares and none of the blood, so it feels like a really good ghost story you could tell around the campfire or an urban legend. Certainly, it would be a good way to introduce kids to the slasher genre. genre. Truly. Uh, Travis Legler says the title and picture sound and look like a Goosebumps book. I must admit I do enjoy when you do TV movies. I hope someday you'll do Peter Benchley's The Beast. Ooh, yeah, all right, yeah. I'm interested. That one might come. We've done, this is the giant squid movie. Yeah. yeah. I don't but, remember if it was interesting, though, if it was good enough. And it's a two-part. See, I'm always like, you know, like I've always wanted to do Salem's Lap, but I mean, yeah. you're in that's like close to three hours. hours. Yeah, well, three hours. Isn't the Beast also in the two-part? Probably. I know, I've always probably. wanted to do the TV version of The Shining, but that's like four hours. That's Yeah, yeah. that was a three, three episode. Three, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um... Spags Getty says, apparently <laughs> the only official thing Otis Hazelrig has ever done is lick stamps. There you go. Yep. Yeah, that's a great insult. That Don't fucking keep stamp that licker. in my back pocket. <laughs> yeah. uh, that seems like a really, like, people that work at the post office would really take offense at that. Yeah. Like, that is the slur yeah. for them. You fucking yeah. stamp licker. It is a slur, yeah. 
Uh, last week we watched Ooh, a Stamplicker. Movie. That's the horror oh. movie name. Yeah, this st- uh, there, that's the mailman horror movie name. Uh, Stamplicker. Copyright. Yeah. 20, copyright twenty twenty three. Saturday freak show. Stamplicker. Really, week. you're not going to go like final notice or something like that? Mm, no, I like Stamplicker. No, Stamplicker. Okay. <laughs> Just, All right. That sounds good. Change of address. Yeah, change. No. Okay. <laughs> Return to sender. Yeah. <laughs> um, last week we watched Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings. The boy with the Jason tattoo wrote in hmm. and says, I haven't written in for a while, but Pumpkinhead 2 was the first one I saw. And when it was a TNT staple, mm. it's also hard to believe that Jerk Danny played the doomed lover in Return of the Living Dead yeah. Part 3. Yeah. It was oh, a, yeah. That's okay. I was I'm like, there I was know a this bunch guy. of C-list more people. Yeah, that's where he's that from. In the, Sean wasn't you here. I weren't here, here. Yep. but I saw him because of the post- pictures you posted. I was like, why do I know that guy? What the fuck? Return. That was everyone doing? in that movie. It was gotcha. all C-list people <laughs> that you've seen in other horror movies that were probably better. So, um, wait, what did you say? Oh yeah. Well, he says like, uh, I think Blood Wings was the first one I saw too. Before, oh yeah. Before the first pumpkin. Yeah. yeah I, saw, I saw Blood Wings. Yeah. yeah. Because it was on TV, all yeah. like like you said. TV, Did you know there's time. no blood wings in that movie? I think yeah. There's there, no wings. None. No, like not no even. Wings. Not even <laughs> no wings. I think that may have been one of the things where like, where's where's the what's the blood wings? Yeah, what's the blood wings? Yeah. Pumpkinhead uh, looks like he should be able to fly. I'm sorry, he's got a gargoyle he, design. Like true, sh- he does. Should be big bat wings on them for Pat. the remake. Oh yeah. god. Um, oh, for the fifth movie. Pat Hatfield says, uh, Pat Hatfield says, Pumpkinhead 4 Blood Feud, uh, that's yes. the one that brings back uh, Lance Henriksen, mm-hmm. oh. actually involves the Hatfields and the McCoys as part of the plot. <laughs> needless to say, you know which side I'm on. Oh my God. Uh, no pumpkin way. Pumpkinhead side, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the week before, we watched a movie called Mausoleum, and Rag Timer says, uh, The Gardener was the best character in this motion um, picture. Yes. Ben the Gardener. And uh, Bishaw Foolery says, ha ha, that dude had some smooth pillow talk. <laughs> like, finally, we're alone. Yes. Yeah. In this here, burlap this sack burlap. of a bed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here, let's go to the shed. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think tools. hay might be better than burlap. Like Maybe. But hay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. either Just way. None of it's, it's, none of it's great. Well, thank you very much, all of you, for writing in. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, starting with Sean. Uh, I like this movie. Um, I didn't know. I uh, always heard the title. Hadn't watched it. Forgot that it was like a made for TV movie from back in the day. Um, didn't know like I didn't know Larry Drake was in it or, you know, Charles Durning. Like, I didn't know these people were in it. Um, surprised. Um, the movie, again, like we said, restraint and it's like, it's, it's really good. I'm, I'm very surprised by this movie. Like it's, it's a really good movie. I like, I like the, um, the design of the scarecrow. Like I said, I wish we could have seen it more, but the way they use it in this movie is pretty good. Um, good character work. Cause man, I really, I hated the bad guys. I like the good guys. So, I mean, you know, then, then that's not always the case. Um, yeah, it, it just, I, I surprising. Surprising is the word for this movie. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good one. It's got that really good atmosphere for like this time of year, especially mm-hmm. um, probably one of the better Scarecrow movies. Just looking at the list of uh, if you just Google Scarecrow movies, you're mm-hmm. going to find some bad looking shit. Feels like it's the highbrow Scarecrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it ended, I mean, 30, 30, 30 years later or whatever. Yeah, it ended up being uh, or 40 years later. Um, Yeah, this was good. This was entertaining. There was some. I think it was just me because I was tired tonight, but there there may be like a few slow parts um, again, because it's not a scarecrow running around killing people. Right. Just so mm-hmm. go in knowing that. But the sort of mystery of it and the atmosphere and, you know, uh, trying to figure out what's going on, what exactly is going on and everything. Um, yeah, it's good. I liked it. Uh, I recommend it. Um, Colin, can I borrow this? Because I want to look at the special features on oh, this. Oh, because it's got all it's 30th anniversary edition. It's got all a bunch of new stuff on there with interviews and shit. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to learn more about it and give it another watch. Like this would be a good one for the October slate of yeah. movies to watch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's been on my. Li- I've like wanted to bring it to yeah, the show it's, for yeah. years. It's good. Uh, Joe Bob did this. He right? scooped I'm, me. I was yeah, like, well, damn it. I right, was well, like, now I want to go. Thought we were going to bring back <laughs> Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Well, now I want. Uh, now I'm going to go back and watch that as well. Like I am. I am in on this movie mm-hmm. in that I want to know more about it and scarecrows in general. So mm-hmm. I recommend it to you. Uh, I think you'll like it too, Michaela. What did you think? I think that. 
the scarecrow genre of horror movies is something I need to learn more about. Yes. But I do think that I probably have seen the best one now. <laughs> and that does make me a little sad because like it's only going to go downhill from here, right? Oh, um, I, I, am, I imagine fucking Full Moon has some bad scarecrow movie of some sort because they love to do those bad character movies, you know. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this. I, I do agree, Sean, with what you're saying about how... I wish we could see more of the scarecrow like walking around and doing stuff, especially because it is such a good design and so scary. Right. But like that being said, this movie does a really good job at at telling and not showing, I guess. Like, I guess, but in a way, I don't know. I'm not worried that right. But it, it <laughs> we we talked about how good the narrative was for this movie and how like well executed the characters are. And yeah. like it's it's a mob justice movie, but there's a lot more texture to it than you would think um, for how simple the concept is. Right. Uh, and I really enjoyed that about it. I, like I said, I do think it's like Halloween ends tried to do this and failed, you know, because they didn't <laughs> they didn't do the characters well enough. Like yeah. these characters are way more developed than anyone in Halloween ends, you know, and in a way that makes sense for these people too. Yes. you know, um, and I. I really enjoyed it, and I I just wish we got more scarecrow shots because the design's so you know, scary. Really do like <laughs> yeah. I like the movie as it is, yeah. and it works. Although the missing scarecrow stuff, it, it works for the movie yes. that this is. Yes, I just wanted more. It's a good scarecrow. design. It's a good design. Yep. It's really scary. I liked the 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 fall atmosphere. I liked the Justice Wind. I liked. <laughs> it's um, justice wind. I liked that all the kills were farm related. Like because <laughs> the scarecrow is going to stick to what he knows, right? Yeah, so right. I like that it's all on theme. I it's appreciate like good, that. Like good writing, like you said. Like he put the pitchfork in his hands, and that's how he died. Yeah, at the exactly. Like, he said, "Oh, bitch, this is what you want." Right. Yeah, you want the pitchfork? I'll give it to you. Yeah, there exactly. It is. Um, yeah, as hard as I'm, I agree. I'm glad Larry Drake was out of this movie early on, but his performance I thought was pretty good. Yes. Uh, you can, you very easily go too far with this type of role. Uh, yeah, yeah. Look at, um, uh, what, that Tropic quote Thunder. from Tropic Thunder, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, Tropic the one, Thunder, you, you never go line. full, you know what? Yep. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he did a good job, but yeah, it also is really hard to see those people put in positions, uh, like mm-hmm. this and coming off the backs of Pumpkinhead two of watching a lynching yeah. to Oof. a feral deformed boy, uh, Wow, this was a theme for a while there. One, Colin's like, didn't go yeah, far enough. Yeah, I'm going to bring yeah. you more. Um, so I think maybe we can find better setups, but it really does. There is no gray area in this movie. It is very black and white. Yeah. I would say maybe the gray area is maybe Mary Lee, just because she's kind of an oblivious idiot little kid <laughs> that causes a lot of problems unintentionally. But uh, yeah, I definitely recommend it. It's a good time, and I really enjoyed it, and I like the atmosphere and the design and it was just a really solid little movie. Yeah. So definitely recommend it. Colin, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that's basically my review of it. It's mm-hmm. so, it's a solid, well-written little ghost story. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, each of us has kind of talked about the restraint that, that they showed budgetarily or what. I mean, I think, you know, yes. It's got an awesome looking creepy scarecrow and you're like, yeah, I want to see that thing move around. And I wonder if that's why the movie made such an impression on me is because you don't, Mm -hmm. you know, you are, (coughs) you are left with that. Uh, you know, you you want, you know, it's like, I wanted to see the killer scarecrow thing. You remember it packs such a punch. I thought that last moment where it actually turns around. I actually used that. I don't know. You see my animated movie, Raven's Hollow. Did you put it? Uh, I haven't watched it in a while, but yes. <laughs> inspired it, by this movie <laughs> where I was like, you, you're not going to see this scarecrow do anything. <laughs> Until one, just one just thing one. that says it's actually supernatural. Um, yeah. It creeped me out so much because of that one shot at the end. And I think that, you know, the fact that it was able to orchestrate that so well, um, just like that makes this movie is like a classic, I think. Uh, and you know, you go like, well, how much of it is the nostalgia for you saw it as a kid and it made an impression on you, but obviously but the fact that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's kind of why you bring it to the Saturday night freak show. It's like, how, how does it play? Yeah. You come you know, here to now. figure it out. Yeah. And sometimes you don't like the answer, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, Colin got the happened. answer, a good answer. <laughs> yeah. tonight, so. Um, and all the performances. Yeah. I think are, uh, I mean, it's just like a solid made a very competent professional uh, little ghost story. And uh, yeah, I think if you're ever talking about like the spooky, scary scarecrow movie to me, we didn't mention uh, Jeepers Creepers, which Mm -hmm. has a lot of that 
imagery in Jeepers yeah. Creepers yeah, it does. 2 anyway. I tend not to bring up Jeepers Creepers much anymore yeah, just because of what's his name who directed it. Yeah. He's a yeah. piece yeah. of shit. Yeah. But yeah, that does have that a lot of that imagery. Good imagery. Isn't that like the poster the, for one of them even? The like second the scarecrow? One, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, even though it's not a that's scarecrow. That's not my scarecrow. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a good scene, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is... Because, uh, I mean, Scarecrows has a lot of uh, fan um, you know, uh, appreciation. I didn't care for it as much, but that's like, you know... Uh, uh, stuffed, uh, mm-hmm. you know, straw scarecrows yeah. wandering around. Um, I don't know. You'll have to check it out and see what you think. But uh, I would definitely 100% recommend you watch Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that means uh, because all three of us agreed, that means you're contractually. Hollywood like it too. I think to she watch would. It. I think she yeah. would. Like it's it's got good, good atmosphere. Uh, mm-hmm. And you should put it on. Yeah, I mean, this is like, you know, one yeah, of put those. Put on a fire, put on this movie. Yeah. Yep. It's one of those uh, Halloween time on the road. This should be a drive in movie because most drive ins are in cornfields. Yeah. yeah so this yeah. should right? barely and be then, a drive in uh, movie. Yeah. And just put a couple scarecrows, scarecrows out yeah, there. Exactly. Or have one walking around a little bit. Like, get some atmosphere. Get some pumpkins and corn stalks, you know, going in the decorations. Yeah. It'd be fun. It'd be great. It's a good one. All right, so uh, next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Sean, what are we watching next week? Um, I believe I believe this year is the... It's either ninth or 10th year anniversary. I guess it doesn't matter. We'll be watching It Follows. All oh, right. Oh, boy. Okay, so All now right. we're finally going to get to see what... Uh, is it worth it 10 years later? Right, right yeah. All the hype of I think, that Yes, I think we've come far enough where we can... That's why I'm bringing it, because I'm like, how do we feel about it now? Okay. Yeah. Like, All right, I'm we, curious. How are we doing? It's right. been a little while since I've seen it. Yep, so. Me too. Right. So next week is It Follows. We hope 